What's up guys, today we will be going over all the new sniper rifle nerfs that are going to be coming next season. So in this video we will be breaking down what those changes are, how they will impact the DPS and total damage output of all the different snipers, and also just my overall thoughts. So first, Iznagi's burden is being changed, the animation speed of Honed Edge is no longer affected by the reload stat, and also Outlaw has been replaced with no distractions. Then snipers in general, damage to major enemies and above have been reduced to pre-shadow keep values roughly minus 20%. Adaptive snipers aka 90 RPM precision multiplier has been reduced from 3.25 to 2.95x. And finally, rapid fire snipers, the 140 RPMs, base impact has been reduced from 100 damage to 90 damage, which is PvP numbers, but we can assume the change will also impact PvE roughly minus 10%. So first, let's look at Iznagi's Burden. Right now, if you have reload speed increases on your armor or whatever, that impacts the reload speed of both the regular reload then also when you proc Hone Edge. But after the change, when you proc Hone Edge, which is what you do when you hold down the reload button, it will no longer be considered a reload in the game and no longer be impacted by reload speed increases. So it's going to be a static reload speed just like that pretty much which is very, very slow. Looking at the damage it hits right now, it hits 86,284, but it will be losing roughly 20% damage, which will take it to 71,903 after this update goes live. Now looking at the rate of fire of Iznagi's Burden, shooting off five Hone Edge times four shots. First, we're gonna be looking at what it is right now with reload speed increases. And as you see, I'm not reload canceling or anything like that. Reload canceling, all that allows you to do is ADS quicker. It does not allow you to shoot quicker, so it doesn't actually matter at 9.51 seconds. Now we do the same thing with how it's going to be after the update, where it's going to be one static reload speed and increased reload speeds for snipers will not impact the Hone Edge reload, so it's going to take forever every single time. Doing that five times now takes 12.313 seconds. So right now the DPS is 45,000 over five shots, but after this update goes live, with the reload speed nerf, then also the damage nerf, it's going to be 29,198, which is really bad. Also looking at the total damage output of this weapon, with two reserves you can hold up to 6 Hone Edge times 4 shots, meaning half a million total damage now, but after we lose that 20% damage, it'll drop to 431,000. Moving on to all the other types of sniper rifles, first with the 72 RPM aggressive frames. These aren't being impacted by anything outside of the 20% damage change, so right now they hit 2638. Then if you reduce it by 20%, it goes down to 17198, which should be the value it was hitting before Shadow Keep, which is what they're doing. Now look at the rate of fire, we're going to use two magazines for all the different sniper rifles, no triple tap, nothing like that. Just straight up two magazines with double enhanced sniper rifle loader. That takes 9.043 seconds, meaning DPS right now is 22.8 thousand, and after it's been dropped to 19 thousand and 18, which, wow, I'm glad they're definitely nerfing snipers, you know, that was borderline broken. They also hold 22 ammo with double reserves, meaning 454 thousand damage right now, then it's been dropped to 418 thousand after this update. Now moving on to the 90 RPM adaptive frames, which are actually going to be hit twice, not only by the negative 20%, but also with a crit modifier change. Right now they're 3.25x crit modifier, and that'll drop to 2.95, so they're getting hit twice, so right now they do 18.558, but after they're going to drop all the way down to 14,035, which is a huge drop off. Now looking at the rate of fire over two magazines, shooting off seven shots, and then reloading in seven more shots, so 14 total. It's going to take quite a while at roughly... 10.461 seconds, meaning the DPS right now is 24.8 thousand, but after it's going to go all the way down to 18.783, which is really, really low for a special weapon. They also hold 26 ammo, which means 482 right now, dropping all the way down to 364 after. Finally, the last sniper rifle, the 140's rapid fire frames, are getting hit twice just like the previous one, both by the 20% change and also roughly the 10% impact damage change also. So right now they hit 14168 and after them drop all the way down to 10,626, which is once again, just like the 90's, a pretty big drop off. Now look at the rate of fire, once again 7 shots, reload in 7 shots again. This one's obviously going to be the quickest at 7.057 seconds. I mean, DPS right now is 28,107, which is actually pretty good, but it's going to drop all the way down to 21,080. I mean, these numbers are bad. There's no other way of putting them. And these snipers hold 27 ammo with double reserves, meaning 286,000 after this update goes live, which is, once again, really bad. The final sniper I want to show off is Whisper of the Worm, which is going to be exotic heavy, which I predict will actually be probably one of the top things in the meta next season. Looking at the damage right now, it hits 34,710. Then if we account for the 20% damage reduction, it's going to be 28,925, which is still pretty good for a sniper like this that you don't have to reload with a white nail. 
So shooting off two magazines or six shots, you don't actually have to reload because of white nail, and it only takes 4.037 seconds. Which means the DPS right now is 51,588, which is the highest, but then after it's going to still be 42,990, which is a lot better than everything else we've mentioned on this list so far. Then on top of that, the total damage output is once again the highest of anything on this list, at 665,000 total damage after the update. Before I get to my overall opinions about these changes, one that I saw a lot of people mention was Line and Sand with the God Roll Rapid Hit and Fireline. Would that be the meta for precision DPS after this change to snipers? And since nothing is changing to fusion rifles, I can just look at my old video. And over two magazines with this god roll, it did 30,551 DPS, which isn't bad. As we just saw, the whisper is still like at 43,000, so there's no way this will ever be the meta. Yeah, it might be a little bit more viable than it is right now, but whoever is trying to say it will be the meta next season, it's just simply will not. Alright, so let's go over these changes and what I actually think about them. So there's been so many thoughts that have gone through my mind since I read the TWAB last night. So it's going to be really hard and probably will become a rant at some point. But pretty much, let's just start off with Iznagi's Burden. So I think we can all agree Iznagi's Burden was pretty much the best option for PvE since the Luna Faction Rally Barricade nerf. Because of the fact that it pretty much had some of the highest DPS in the game with really good total damage output. And it was also a special weapon which means the ammo was really easy to get. And you could still use the heavy weapon at the same time with it. So there's no denying that it was super strong. So if they wanted to change Iznagi's Burden, that is one thing and you know, it probably wouldn't have been well received, but it kind of was something that might have been needed. But then there's the argument that, yeah, it was the meta, but if we look at all the previous metas in Destiny's history, from G-Horn spam to Exotic Sword spam to Touch of Malice in like Armor Light Bubbles, then when D2 came out, it was Cluster Bomb Rockets, then it went to Grenade Launcher spam with Luna Faction, then it finally landed on Iznagi's Burden. So out of all those major metas we've ever seen in PvE, this was arguably the most skillful one. It was a precision damage weapon. It wasn't just spamming some explosive. And there was like a skill gap to actually optimizing your damage. So out of all the metas we've ever had, this was by far like the most healthy one. So yeah, it was definitely the best option, but I think a lot of us can agree that it was a good meta. But no matter what we think and feel, they are going through with this change and it's really gonna be pretty bad afterwards it's gonna be doing roughly 30,000 dps which is you know gonna be a lot lower than most of the heavy weapons in the game so it's not gonna be as useful for dps as it is right now it's still gonna do really good damage per shot so for something like champions and nightfalls i can still see it being very useful there but for like a raid weapon or just a weapon you use for pretty much every boss encounter it's not gonna be the number one spot anymore now moving on to the sniper changes in general I just really don't know what they're thinking. Yes, recently snipers have been the most used special weapons, and that's not because they're broken, that's because they were actually worth using. Like what do they expect us to be using right now? If you look at shotguns, they were pretty much neutered multiple times because of autoloading, then once they got rid of autoloading, they didn't revert some of the changes back to how they were. So shotguns really haven't been viable recently, if anything shotguns need to be looked at and brought to where snipers were and kind of reverted some of the changes. For example, if you want to make shotguns as good as snipers without nerfing snipers, the easiest change you could have done was just revert trench barrel to how it was and make it last for a full magazine. Or you could even get more creative and you know reloading with shotguns. Right now, reloading is what impacts the DPS of shotguns the most because of the fact you have to reload all 8 shots one at a time. Well, you know what you could do? You could make it so you reload two shots at a time with shotguns, and guess what? That would make their DPS a little bit higher without actually buffing their damage. Like, it really isn't that hard to bring shotguns up to where snipers were. Then we also have fusion rifles, which have been kind of in no man's land in PvE forever, pretty much, outside of maybe loaded question and things like Telesto. Like, it shouldn't be a surprise that snipers were being used more than fusions. Then we also have trace rifles, and trace rifles are trace rifles. There's not really much to say about them. Pretty much what this boils down to is snipers were the most used not because they were standing out and much better than the other options is because they were pretty much the only one worth using and what needed to happen was make shotguns more viable then also maybe make fusions more viable and not bring snipers down to shotguns and fusions because now what you just did was make it so none of these special weapons are viable and now the result will be just going back to exotic heavy weapon spam I'm not going to fully predict the next meta until I break down grenade launchers also because there's a very high chance where this thing goes straight back to GL spam. But even if GLs are like nerfed to the ground, which I haven't really looked at them yet, a lot of these exotic heavies are going to be the DPS metas again. For example, Whisper of the Worm, Accuracy for close range stuff, Anarchy, 1000 Voices, even Coil. And most importantly, one that I will actually think will be the number one DPS option, Prospector. 
and all the special weapons are going to be going back to pretty much not used at all for boss fights. So I think Bungie will actually get what they want and see shotguns and fusions being used more often in PvE. Not because they're going to be good or viable, but simply because you have to pick a special weapon. I mean, you gotta choose one of them. So overall, I'm not gonna really make too many predictions about the meta until after tomorrow's video about the grenade launcher changes, but it's becoming more and more clear that Bungie is only buffing and nerfing things based on usage rates, which isn't the proper way of doing stuff. Like, these snipers were not an issue at all. They weren't being used the most because of the fact they were broken and needed a tweak. They were being used the most because they were the only ones worth using, and the other special weapons needed more changes to make them more viable again. But instead, what they did was make none of the specials viable, and now we're just gonna be like in this constant state of just spamming heavy weapons again. Anyways, like I said, I could definitely rant for like another 45 minutes about how I thought snipers were actually in the perfect spot for special weapons in terms of damage output, and the other things need to be brought up to them. Because of the fact primaries were doing roughly 10 to 15,000 DPS, then you had snipers right around 30,000 DPS, then you had heavy weapons at 45 to 50,000 DPS, so the spread between the three different types of weapons were actually very balanced. And now that you brought snipers down to like 20 to 25,000 DPS, it just makes heavies that much better than specials and heavies will just be king again. I just don't really know what they're doing. But overall, I just don't think this was the play. Is Nagi's nerf? Yeah, whatever, you know, that kind of was needed. But at the same time, I don't think it was necessarily needed because of the fact that the Is Nagi's meta was a lot healthier than just going straight back to geo spamming. But the sniper changes were definitely not needed at all. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about these changes so far. I'm definitely going to be making the video about the GL changes tomorrow, so definitely watch that one. And after I look at the GL damage and how that's going to be changing, I'll probably have a more clear idea of where the meta will go. Right now, I'm guessing probably Whisper the Worm or probably still GLs. But anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.